Okay, hello everyone. Mm. Is it okay? Yeah. So I would today I would like to talk about scaling Elasticsearch instances. We did for our one of the, our recent clients. But first of all, who am I? Uh, I happen to be a sole three one cookbook author. I also happen to be a Sematex engineer. I'm a sole PL co-founder and father and husband. So that's that's the introduction. Let's skip it. What we'll talk about today is Elasticsearch scaling, how we did it for one of the recent clients, uh, how we index thousands of documents per second with performing queries uh, in tens of milliseconds. While doing that, we had to control shards and replica allocation, handling multiple content and query, uh, multilingual content and queries, while doing, of course, performance testing and cluster monitoring to see if everything is OK. So the first thing, the challenge was, that we had more than 50 millions of documents per day coming constantly. We didn't have a time to rebalance or stuff like that. We needed the real-time search because people were constantly in indexing their uh, content and wanted to search after they posted it. So uh, there is, uh, the other thing was that we had to provide less than 12, uh, 200 milliseconds average latency time with a throughput of more than 1,000 queries per second. Of course, as I told, multilingual indexing and querying. I'll try to show you today what we did to handle that kind of challenge. First of all, why we choose Elasticsearch? It's written with uh, near real-time search and, uh, in mind and cloud support. It, provide, it uses Lucene at, at the hood and all its goodness, so we can use all the analysis of Lucene and stuff like that. It provides distributed indexing with document control uh, out of the box. Uh, and it's easy to create indices, shards, and replicas on live cluster. We don't have to restart it. We don't have to close it. We can do that on the live cluster. So first of all, the index design we chosen were like this. We had several indices, at least one for each day of data. The uh, data were divided into days, because that's how our client by, uh, business is run. Mm, we had uh, multiple shards of a single index and multiple replicas of a single shard to have failover and to provide the needed throughput and query time. Of course, real-time synchronous replication and near real-time index refresh from 1 to 30 seconds, depending if the index was the current one of the current day where one second rep uh, index refresh time was needed, or if it was the Indices this previous one, previous one when we can afford 30 seconds of uh, uh, refresh time because the deletes and the index or updates were not so crucial as the, as the one that are for the given day. So the first problem we had to solve was the shard deployment problem. In Elasticsearch, at least right now, you have a situation when you, have, when you can have a multiple shards on a, given, on a single node. When you have multiple nodes uh, in your cluster and you have uh, multiple shards in the index, you can end up having hot uh, nodes and uh, not so hot and even the ones that are cold with no queries. You want to avoid it. The, because of that, uh, we did some things. And I'll try to show you the first thing, what we did. So this is the default shard deployment. You can see we have an Elasticsearch cluster, for example, with three nodes. And the default deployment can end up like this, when you have three, two shards on one node, the one shard on the second node, without a single shard on the third node, and of course the replicas here. You can imagine that the node one will be much hotter than node three. Most queries and index, dev, and index uh, documents will hit node one, less to node two, and less to node three. So how can you avoid that? First of all, you can control uh, shard replication. It's called uh, shard awareness replication in Elasticsearch. So first of all, you can control the, how index, where index is placed with the properties I show you. It's an index routing allocation include with a tag and index routing allocation with uh, exclude. The first one lets you set where you want shards to be placed in the cluster, while the other where you don't want the shards to be placed. The second thing, you can control it with IP addresses. The same thing, actually, it's for the whole cluster. In the, in the example, you can include some IPs or exclude some IPs from the, in, from the allocation. And that's one thing that is very crucial for us. 
It can be specified on the index and cluster level, and it can be changed during live, uh, on the cl live cluster. So you don't have to restart cluster. You don't have to do anything with it. You can set the uh, properties, create a new index, and it will be placed where you want it to be. So mm, some examples of shard allocation, for example, we want the whole cluster to be whole the new shards of uh, index and replicas to be placed only on the given IP, uh, or not be placed on the given IP. So we exclude, we put a curl command to Elasticsearch, and Elasticsearch knows we don't want shards to be placed on that IP. And on the other hand, we, we want to include two nodes or nodes that, are, that have the, the given node one and node two or node two tags to have the index called semi-text to be placed on those tags, those nodes, sorry. So in addition to that, you can control the number of shards per node, how many shards are allocated to a node. We also use that. Uh, it's specified on the index level, can be changed on live indices. So that's, that's an, an example of that. We want the maximum of two, shard, two shards per node for the index semi-text to be allocated. It works. So what's the situation after we uh, provided the, all those uh, properties? So we remember our cluster with three nodes. After that, we had single shard on each node, which is good. We don't have any node hotter than the other. We have evenly balanced nodes and the replicas still there, just like they were. So right now, this is good. We wanted this. Uh, this, is, this was evenly distributed. The next, the next thing is the routing. Sorry. Uh, in Elasticsearch, you can control where uh, documents and queries are sent. Uh, the default Elasticsearch uh, behavior is the one that uh, uh, when you send a document to, uh, to indexing, Elasticsearch hashes the ID of the document and place it in the, one of the shards based on that. Mm, uh, you can change that by specifying the routing parameter uh, or specifying a routing field in, the elastic, in your mappings so uh, the, uh, the value will be taken the, from the document and on basis on that value uh, the document will be placed in one of the shards. Uh, the one thing, uh, routing can take any value, so if you, for example, want to uh, place documents uh, for, on the basis of a user ID uh, because you know you will be only searching within the user documents, then you can use routing to specify and specify that the user ID will be used for routing and all the documents for a given user will be uh, indexed in a single shard. That's good because when querying, you can specify the, also the same routing value and Elasticsearch will query only the one single shard. It's it's good for this, it's good for this. So for example, this is how the routing is done. We we'll wanted to index some document into, into semi-text index with a text test type ID one and the routing value one to three. And the, shard, and the document will be placed in a shard based on this uh, value, routing value. So oh, indexing the data. The normal indexing procedure in Elasticsearch is like this, you have shards, you have replicas in each of the nodes. You have some indexing application, let's call it like this. It connects to Elasticsearch, and then Elasticsearch chooses which shard to place the document at, and the shard is, of course, replicated in real time the, to its replica or to its replicas, because there can be more than one replica of each shard. Uh, we did uh, some other thing. We decided to have a single node with a not, on, not in this case a single node, but a few nodes without data being indexed to them. And we decided to have something like that. We send the data to that node with, a, with, no, with no data on it, and this node is only responsible for querying and for distributing the, the documents to other, to other nodes. It can be specified by, se by setting the node data to false, it's not a default this elastic search behavior, but we use it because we did suffer for, for a few nodes. We did suffer from I.O. 
and we wanted to avoid that. We wanted to push constant, constantly push the documents into Elasticsearch and not worry about it. Uh, that's that's how it can it can be done. The other thing is the multilingual indexing. Elasticsearch allows you to specify which analyzer is used for in the, for indexing the current document. Mm. Be before we uh, send the document to Elasticsearch, we use the Sematex Lang ID uh, software to detect uh, language ID of the language of the document, and we specified with it with the analyzer field of the document. You can I'll show you how it's done. For example, here are the mappings for the single test uh, <coughs> type. You can you can see at the top that there is an analyzer specified that will, will be chosen on the basis of the lang ID field, and there is a line, lang ID in the bottom that is a string stored and not analyzed. And when pushing a document to Elasticsearch, you just specify the, lang the language, and you can see that there is an English. Of course, you have to provide uh, uh, analyzer configurations for all those types you will be having in your, uh, that can be returned by your lang ID, or something like Tika, or our software. <laughs> it's, it's simple. Multilingual queries uh, are a bit more complicated and problematic because they are short. Most queries are short, at least in our, in our deployment. So what, what we had to do is, uh, with some probability, um, choose the right language for a query. Imagine a single term query that you have to found language for. It can be mapped to multiple languages, actually, because it's not so simple. But you can also specify an analyzer for, ex for a query to, that will be used to um, process the query, and it's specified with an analy analyzer parameter as shown in the example. It's pretty simple. The most problematic stuff here is the lang language identification of the query, actually. So. The other factors we needed to overcome are the performance factor of the Lucene, not only the Elasticsearch. So the default refresh interval we had for uh, indices are one second, can be specified on cluster or index level, the same as most of the parameters in Elasticsearch. And you can see the example how to specify the, this parameter. It's actually set to 600 seconds. It says how uh, often the index is refreshed. Uh, with opening the index searcher and how, how fast the data will be available to the users. Uh, as I told earlier, the first, uh, the indices that we were uh, most interested in, the ones that are the current indices for the current day, had the default refresh rate on one second, and the other, and other indices could have longer, longer refresh rate, and it, it's very, very important because the, as, uh, longer the refresh rate, the performance will be better. Of course, if the, in, if the, index, uh, if the data is being indexed to the current index you, we are talking about. There is also a merge factor. Uh, we also uh, changed it. It defines how merges are done in Lucene. If uh, you know Lucene, you know what merge is, the compact of the indices, actually the segments. Mm. Let's get to the routing once again. Mm, so we talked that the routing is uh, on the indexing lets you specify a single, uh, a single shard with the data should be routed to. The same goes to the, quer to the query time when you can specify a, a routing parameter and uh, let Elasticsearch know which shard of the given index should be queried. It's, it's uh, performance-wise, to if you can have routing, it's good to use it. For example, I told about the user. You can, if you know that you will be only searching for a user, user data, only a single user, you can use it and query a single index, a uh, single shard of the index. So without routing, index uh, searching in Elasticsearch looks ah, simply like this. It queries all the shards, gathers the uh, results, and uh, returns the results. For some deployments, that will be long. That's that's normal. With routing, it's a bit different. You can see the application querying Elasticsearch and only hitting a single shot, so the query will be very fast. Uh, I have some performance numbers did on one of those EC2 instances, 
uh, not for the give, not for the uh, deployment I'm talking about, but you can see that with uh, 200 shards in the single, a single replica, uh, we had an average response time with one thread of more than 3,000 milliseconds for a single query. That's not fast. But with routing, those performance numbers are way different from, each, from the ones that you see with the, without routing. The, that matters. Mm. What else you can do uh, about scaling query throughput? You can increase the number of shards for data distribution and distribute the data across different nodes. You can increase the number of replicas. You can use routing and always avoid hitting a single, single Elasticsearch instance and avoid hotspotting it. You can do that with, uh, with uh, distributing. You can do that with parameters and with specifying uh, shard allocation and stuff. The other thing we hit was uh, a problem of faceting because on the da data we had, the faceting uh, was uh, doing uh, was blowing out our instances because of the field data cache in Elasticsearch. Mm, when faceting and sorting in Elasticsearch, field data cache is being t is being populated. And for, but the default behavior of Elasticsearch is that the field data cache is resident, so you can't actually control its... Uh, uh, the default size of Elasticsearch field data cache is not restricted. The field data cache can be huge in Elasticsearch, uh, so we decided to change it. What you can do with field data cache, you can uh, keep its resident uh, uh, type and use a maximum size and expiration time with those, with those properties. Uh, you can also change its type to, to soft. The soft uh, data cache uses soft references, uh, Java 6, uh, which can be, those references to objects can be freed when garbage collector needs it. Uh, you can also change your data make your fields less precise. For example, if you don't need seconds or milliseconds in dates, you can shrink them, for example, to minutes or how hours. Uh, you can also reduce the fields granularity. So that's one thing. Also, you can buy more servers. That's, that's the other thing. After the changes, you, you, saw, you saw in the previous chart that we had the field data cache of more or nearly 16 gigabytes. It's after the changes, it was 37. But you have to remember one thing. Field data cache uh, is uh, costly to rebuild. You have to know what you are doing to use soft data cache and use expiration time. If you uh, want your faceting to be very fast, you need to have resident cache. Additional problems we encountered, and I can't talk because of the time. The rebalancing after full cluster restarts, long startup and the initialization of the uh, cluster we had, and faceting with string versus faceting on numbers of high cardinality fields. When you have multiple tags for a single document, uh, you end up having faceting uh, being executed for a long time. Mm. The other thing is the JVM optimization. Uh, just some few, po few points. Remember to leave enough memory to OS cache uh, for the I.O. Uh, we tend to not uh, get, give JVM more than 60% of the me total memory available to the system. Make frequent, G uh, make frequent garbage collector uh, not uh, frequent but shorter uh, rather than rare and long ones because you will suffer from um, stop the world events. And if you do short performance testing, use always pre-touch uh, to map the uh, JVM memory to the physical memory. It's, it's pretty good to simulate the production environment running for multiple days, while short while performance testing are usually not run for days. Uh, I think I don't have much time yet, but let's uh, do one thing. For performance testing, you need to... Uh, Ask yourself a few questions. How much data, data do you need, and what queries do I need for, for performance testing? Uh, make changes one at a time. Understand the impact of a single change so you know which change affected which uh, parts of your system. Uh, monitor your cluster during, during the performance testing, either with the, uh, both with JSTAT, DSTAT, or VMSTAT, and for example, with our scalable performance monitoring, you can look <laughs> at. Analyze your results. Always analyze your results. Don't take them as they are. See, count them, look at them, see what happened, why that happened. So 
And uh, the last thing I wanted to talk to you is the Elasticsearch monitoring tool. Uh, during the deployment, right now the deployment is being actually new production. Uh, we have, uh, we did monitor it. We used the SPM to monitor such things as cluster health, index statistics, query rate, JVM memory and garbage collector, cache usage, and node memory and CPU usage. And you can see that all, all of that on our stand downstairs. But for example, for cluster health, you can see the charts. Well, here are the node restarts. We, we had we had to see some active shards, 300 of them, more than 300. It's an average for the given amount of time, for five minutes. You can see some indexing statistics for the given indices. Uh, you can see query rate. Mm, this is still not a production environment. It's still pre-production. So uh, you can see the garbage collector and how it worked uh, for a single node uh, here. You can see the cache usage, usage for a single node too. Something like CPU and memory uh, usage and load. It's for the system, uh, for the operating, for the operating system, for the whole machine. Summary. So, what we talked today is a control, how to control shards and replica placement, how to index and query multilingual data, how to shard and route your data, uh, how to monitor your cluster, how to file, find bottlenecks. Uh, while doing performance testing because it's re really, uh, really important. And if you want to work with da big data search or something like that, yes, we're hiring Contact Otis. He's the one, he's the one here making photos. And here's how to contact me or Otis or Sematext. And all the graphs where you, we used for the presentation was from SPM for Elasticsearch. Thank you very much.